Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're looking at the Smith & Wesson M&P 9 Shield Plus Performance Center. I want to thank Brandon over at the gun room in, in Shenandoah for loaning this to us for us to take a look at. Now I looked at a couple of, the, of these uh, small uh, carry concealed pistols. We done a video on the Springfield Hellcat as well as the Sig P365. Now in my opinion these three are probably the top micro caliber pistols that are on the market for as far as uh, carry and concealed. And uh, I've done significant work with uh, these two because I had to choose between these two for my personal carry, which I ended up going with the P365. And I have to say it was a very difficult decision because both of these guns were just so comparable. It was really, really minor details that, uh, that made me pick the 365. Now, a lot of you said that we needed to look at the Smith & Wesson. So we're going to do that. Now, you know, I didn't really look at this one because, you know, you know, first off, this is a little bit larger than what I was looking, what I would normally look at. And I haven't really always been that fond of the m and uh, pistols for, you know, any, any number of reasons. So didn't really look at it, but many of you guys said that I should have. So I finally got my hands on one, did a little bit of a comparison between uh, this and the other ones, and I still stand by my choice on this SIG. But I do have to say uh, this pistol was nice. Some of the marketing stuff on this thing was a little bit off. They did make a lot of claims that this particular one uh, was the smallest. The only thing that was the smallest on here was the overall diameter of the magazine. This magazine was slightly thinner than all of the others because uh, you, you have a 10 round in here and you also have a 13-round magazine as well. Now, this 13-round magazine, you have a base plate on here that's a little bit larger. Uh, enables you to get a little bit better of a perch on it. Now, what they do claim about the magazine is it is the thinnest. Now, I will say it is certainly the thinnest by a very, very small margin, uh, which allows you to have a thinner pistol. However, when you look at the overall diameter of the grip on here, this diameter of this grip is larger than both the P365 and the Hellcat. So, smaller magazine, but that doesn't count for uh, to make it smaller overall. So, let's take a look at what we have here. Of course, we have 9mm caliber pistol. We have the magazines, as you see, uh, t uh, 13 and 10. 10 is, is flush. Overall length, 6.1 inches. Now, this is the performance model, so we have a couple extra features on here. So we have a ported barrel here with uh, three ports. Now, the sights on here are rather nice. Uh, what we do have on here is uh, fiber optic sights. Uh, we have uh, red in the back. We have orange in the front. And they do work quite well for as far as lighting up. One thing about the fiber optic sights are they're not very good at night uh, when, it's, when it's dark out. So I tend to prefer uh, the tritium sights on here. This is a good target gun uh, type sights, but for real world, a lot of your self-defense shootings are generally going to be in uh, lower light conditions. So I probably would, would want to put uh, night sights on here. Looking at the top here, we do have a loaded chamber indicator. Now, these are a little bit difficult because for the most part, it's sitting in rather deep. You can generally hardly see. So you have to flash a light in there to see that, see that brass. But this is one of the options on here. Looking at the slide, you can see we have performance center. We have serrations on the front and on the rear. As you can see, on looking at the slide, we have what they refer to as a armor knight finish, which is a which is a, which is a finish that's proprietary to Smith and Wesson. They use it on most of their guns. That finish is also on the barrel. But you can see we have our extractor on here. We do have serrations front and rear. Looking at the other side, you can see we do have a manual safety on here. Now. Smith & Wesson does offer these guns with both uh, manual safeties and without, uh, which is good because some people prefer them, some don't. Uh, myself, I don't particularly go for them myself. As you can see, we have your slide stop and we have your uh, disassembly lever here. Looking at the trigger, you do have your, your Glock type uh, tit on here. You do have a firing pin safety in here, which is the most critical safety on any kind of a carry concealed. You do have uh, basically a drop safety on here as well. Basically, being the only way this gun's going to go off is if you pull the trigger. Uh, again, you do have a safety. Problem with the safety is, is it's very narrow. It's very difficult to engage. Uh, well, not as bad. It's easier to get off than it is to put on. So again, I, I particularly don't care for these. Now your barrel, you're looking at a 3.1 inch uh, barrel. It's a, a 5R, 1 in 10 inch twist. So as you see, we lock back here. We have a polymer frame. We do have a very nice grip uh, texture on this very easy to get a hold of. We do have a reversible magazine release as well, so you can change that over if you so chose. Now, one of the interesting features on this pistol is that you can disassemble it without uh, dry firing. So we're going to do this a couple different ways. The first is a standard. We're going to make sure that we're empty. We're going to lock back to the rear. We're going to drop the disassembly latch release lever into the unlock position. Go forward, pull the trigger, release. Now, there is one other way of doing this. Now, this is extremely awkward, to say the least. 
but we're going to show you how they advertise it. Okay, so lock back to the rear, drop the lever down. Now, when you're looking inside here, and you're going to see a photograph because this is very difficult to see, you'll see there's a little white wire in here. What we have to do is we have to push that wire down to disengage it. Once that wire is disengaged, we can drop the slide forward and it will come out. Now, looking here, you'll be able to see that we have this is that wire right there. This is extremely difficult to do. I would not recommend doing this. I would recommend that you just do like you do any other any other Glock type pistol. You make sure that it's empty. You dry fire it. This is uh, just too difficult to get to. So now looking at the frame, again, a polymer frame, uh, stainless steel components in here. You have your, your, your locking block front here. You do have, as you can see right here, uh, the firing pin safety, this disconnector on the trigger bar. And looking at the slide, you can see we have our firing pin safety right here. Again, most important part uh, of the safety of any uh, pistol that you're gonna carry. And also you can see our recoil spring, dual recoil springs. Also, uh, this makes it much more durable spring, also less recoil. Push in and lift out. Now we lift our barrel out. Now you can see we have our Armor Knight finish on the barrel. And you can see that we actually have two ports. We have three slots on the, on the, on the slide, but we only have two ports. Now talking a little bit about porting. Uh, porting does assist slightly on keeping the muzzle down, less muzzle flip, however. When you're in a low light condition, it turns the gun into a flamethrower. It will throw flames out the sides. Uh, if you look at you know the high speed footage um, of any gun that has porting, you can see that it does uh, let out quite a bit of flames. The other thing that it does too is you do lose some velocity uh, as well. Some ammunition that could be uh, rather light to begin with, this could push it over the edge and make it so you could have some failures to uh, eject. But as long as you're using a good full power round, you won't have any issue. Uh, we, the ammunition that we use, we had no problems at all. For reassembly, drop the barrel back in, insert the recoil spring. For 20.2 ounces, you have a very uh, lightweight pistol. Now we're going to re engage uh, that lever for as far as disassembly is concerned. We're going to lock the slide open. that back over it's a little on the stiff side now we do have you do have a standard shield plus that, that does not have the enhancements that you see on here now looking at the gun we see performance center what makes this thing special from being a performance center the first thing is going to be the trigger we have a flat trigger on here versus a curved trigger second is going to be the enhanced features on the on the grip texture you have a little bit different of a, of a grip texture than the standard uh, shield Next is going to be the disassembling without pulling the trigger. We showed you that little wire that you push down so you can disassemble without having to pull the trigger, which again, I don't think is much of an enhancement at all. It's too difficult to get to. Now, of course, we have a loaded chamber indicator on here as well, and the front and rear slide serrations. And of course, we have the reversible magazine release as well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to the range and we're gonna see how this shoots.
I'd like to thank our friends over at Copper Custom for uh, providing us this Oskarsan ammunition. This is Turkish ammunition. It's uh, basically a steel case with a brass coating on it, and it's a 124 grain full metal jacket. It's a really good target load, and he's bringing this stuff in by the millions uh, you know, every month. So you might want to give Copper Custom a call and see if they got some of this in stock because it's a really good price. Now, we had no uh, misfires whatsoever. We had no failures whatsoever. Uh, very, very accurate pistol. As you can see from our challenge targets, which we shot, that uh, this is a very accurate pistol. It does exactly what it's meant to do. Uh, the ammunition that we tried in it, we did try some various hollow points in it. We had no failures. You know, overall, it, it shot well. Um, I certainly had no issues with it. Um, if this is a gun that you like the way that it feels, absolutely. You know, I still tended to prefer uh, the p365 over it it just felt a little bit better to me uh, and it, it was just it was a little bit narrower the trigger i think on the, the p365 was a little bit nicer uh, than the than the smith and wesson shield however i think it's a really really nice pistol for an msrp of 623 um, you do get a lot of features on it uh, but for having this as a carry gun i would definitely get rid of the these sights on here get, get yourself some some tritium night sights because, again, I think a lot of conditions you're going to have at night are going to be at night, and these are not going to be as useful to you uh, at night. So, uh, again, looking at our challenge targets, we do have a code for those. You can get 10% off of all the steel challenge targets by using our code SAS. So I hope you, I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, even better share. Thank you.